I call this meeting to order. Please stand for the invocation and silence all your electronic devices so that we can conduct our business by council member. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jackson Square Open Container. Thank you, Council President. As you can see before you, Council, made a request to the city manager to draft a resolution for the city to consider open container in Jackson Square. The topic was discussed at length at the last meeting, and I have drafted a resolution for your consideration. Three of the points I'd like to highlight of the resolution include that bars and restaurants bordering Jackson Square and participating shall provide the city with general liability coverage in the amount of at least a million dollars, naming the city as an additional insured, and providing liquor, li liquor liability coverage for off-premise naming the city as additional insured with a minimum of a million in coverage. Also, that council can re-examine on an annual basis or as necessary this resolution. And lastly, prior to permitting any open containers in Jackson Square, the city shall be provided with the necessary insurance certificates and insurance policies from the participating bars and restaurants and will approve coverage as a condition of participation. Any questions or concerns? Uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Rachel, is, uh, this is just confined to Jackson Square. That's correct, sir. So nobody will be crossing the street going to the parking lot. They are not supposed to. Thank you. Is there any favor to move this to tonight's business meeting for a vote? Yes. Okay, that gets moved. Budget amendments. Thank you, Council President. As you see before you, and what we do every year in May, <clears throat> is finish off the accounting of the 22-23 budget with budget amendments. This year, we're asking to decrease contingency by $74,000 for the budget amendments listed below, including the city manager's budget, legal professional fees, economic development budget, admin budget, and an increase of ice rink bad debt for the write-off of miscellaneous billing invoices to Furland in the amount of $35,320. They failed to pay their natural gas payments. Um, we also had an overage on the repair and maintenance line. Furthermore, we're asking to recognize the amount of $260,671 of VLT aid, video lottery terminal aid, to offset increases in expense in the police department related to personnel, overtime, equipment, and transportation. I'm happy to answer any questions about these. Any questions or concerns? Uh, uh, is there no way we can take legal action against Furlan to try recouping this? Uh, I think there's, there's a few issues with that. I'd rather not discuss them in a public session. We can discuss an attorney-client session if you'd like. But if there are some questions relative to Recoverability, I believe. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, so are we in uh, consensus to move this amend uh, the uh, budget amendments to the business meeting for tonight for a vote? Yes. I think it's moved. Canine committed fund balance. Yes, thank you, Council President. Annually, again at this time, we report on the committed fund balance for our canine program. It is supported uh, almost 100% through donations that the PBA and the police department work very hard um, to obtain to keep the program going. The current committed fund balance is $13,353 at 331.23. Um, to ensure that we move the money correctly, we would ask that you would support this resolution and move it forward. Any questions or concerns on that? 
So we in consensus to move that to tonight's business meeting? Yes. Okay, that gets moved. Muck Dogs, 4th of July fireworks. Yes, this is a request that came up in between meetings uh, for council to consider. Um, the Muck Dogs became aware that the funding for picnic in the park would not be used as that event will not be going on this year. They're asking for the allocation of funds so they can re redirect it for their annual fireworks celebration and to provide 100 tickets for families in need. Any questions or concerns on that? I mean, I think it's a great idea. You know, they've done a great job with that stadium and they're also involved with our ice rink. So I think it's, it's, it's a perfect match to kind of help them out. For this one year only, um, we're this not the one year allocation only. Thing, yes. but it's just because we have that surplus, and we're they're asking, and for one year only, I'm good with it. Yeah. So, okay, so we in consensus to move that forward to tonight's business. Yes. Okay, okay that gets moved. Bid side of Thank you, Council President. Um, I received a letter from the downtown Batavia Business Improvement District that they had been in contact with the New York State Liquor Authority regarding the various events they hold in the district. Um, after these conversations with the State Liquor Authority, it came to the bid's attention that they were not able to conduct the events inside establishments that already had pre-existing liquor licenses. Because those, and uh, if I state this wrong, I'll ask Shannon to help, but those businesses um, are not able to extend those licenses for an event of this nature, which would then profit the bid and not the business to which the original liquor license was issued to. Um, I know that the director of the bid, Shannon Mott, has been working with SLA um, on this issue and continuing to do so to try to have a successful event. But the guidance she got from the State Liquor Authority was that we needed to have open container on this event night to allow those restaurants and bars to be able to participate in the event. So that the request before you would grant special permission to the bid to allow open container on the night of their cider walk. Just in the bid district. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. yes, are people going to be walking and crossing streets with open containers? Or? They could be. Open containers under this special permission pursuant to the city code would be allowed in the bid district to the extent that encompass streets and sidewalks, it could be. Huh? Yeah, and the other thought, I mean, there's always ways around things, and, and, and I was thinking of that. Um, the other thought was, well, those, those licensees that are already in existence could do something out on the sidewalk with a tent or whatever. But now we're talking about having open containers then on the sidewalk, so it just makes sense if we can do that to just grant the open container law for the bid for that particular event, period. Because technically if they had a little pop-up, on the sidewalk, they're in an open container violation issue. Right, right. So then so, you're going to deal with that. So if we, were, if we were to allow that, then you were basically saying, well, those people can have open containers in front of their business. Just open it up, do yeah, it. For it's bit. for one event. Everybody loves that. The people come from all over. It's not just Batavians or Genesee County people that come to those. Uh, people come from all over. They love the wine walks and the cider walk. I mean, maybe, maybe this is a good thing. Whatever sparked this change with the SLA, is actually maybe put us into better territory with actually opening it up and making it more fun for the event to take place. At least we can try it and see, right? Well, we can, you know, there's, we've had discussions, I know, in the, in the past month or so about the open container law in Jackson Square, and there's events where it would be nice um, to, to be able to offer or, or allow these vendors to offer alcohol you know, at, their, at these events. And, and I get that we want to keep it family friendly as well, absolutely. Um, in the event of something like what we're doing with the bid, that isn't a family event, that's an adult only event. Um, but I think even in Jackson Square, I think that, it, you know, under our control, under the city's control, uh, we, we can allow that and still have nice events without things getting out of control. Right. I agree. Yeah. Anyone else on this? 
So are we in consensus to move that to tonight's business for a vote? Yes. Okay, yes. that gets moved. CDBG housing grant, public hearing. <coughs> yes, Council President, members of Council, uh, you have in front of you a resolution in the memo from myself in regards to the New York State Community Development Block Grant that the City of Batavia is interested in submitting funding application for for the 2023 program year. This grant will be implemented to help income eligible owner occupied single family homeowners with essential home repairs. In a sense, it's a grant that we'll be receiving that we can then turn around to homeowners. Part of the grant process is to hold a public hearing, uh, which I am requesting that we hold at our next meeting on June 26, 2023. We also have a survey that is now available for residents on our website as well as at the Richmond Library to fill out in regards to this um, to see if there is definitely an interest in it. So, um, as I mentioned, requesting to hold a public hearing for this grant on June 26, 2023. Just for clarification. Do you want everybody in the city to complete this or those that have a housing issue that might <coughs> need to help? The more we get, the better, and then we'll basically sift right, through so and pull out the ones that are actually applicable to, to what we're trying to do. Okay, so get the word out to any of your ward constituents that there is this thing going on. If they can fill out that survey, it'd be helpful to us going forward, right? <laughs> any questions on this? Yeah. How many responses have you had so far? We have about 10. Yeah, we've got about 10, and we just launched it, I think, on Thursday or Friday last week. Right. So, yeah, hopefully, we get a bunch of 10. Yeah, we tried just for everyone's information in 2019 for the same grant. We did not receive it. We did a debrief meeting um, with the folks at HCR and Community Development Block Grant, took that information, and we'll use it again if we decide to go forward. Um, with the grant application this time if we get enough surveys back. Penny, did you want to comment? I just want to ask, do we have a figure in mind that you would be asking for in the grant or are you waiting for the surveys? Mm -hmm. I believe the maximum, I was on a webinar last week and there was a lot of numbers thrown around off the top of my head. I believe the maximum for a municipality for this particular grant for single family homes, I think was 500,000. So we'll be asking for the maximum amount. And then you give that out accordingly to the amount of need on the housing that is applied to the strategy and all that. Yep. And then homeowners, just filling out the survey doesn't, it may qualify you to be contacted again, but then you have to go through an application process and we have to basically work with you on a project. Um, but definitely helpful to residents that need help, assistance with things like roofs, boilers, porches, decks, you know, things that they just can't get to in the normal course of, of you know their abilities and, and I just to be clarified it's uh, single family homes at this correct point. only so you have to be the owner in the single family home owner occupied single family right. home yeah okay. opportunity to make each house in the neighborhood better and hopefully oh, yeah. continue to from that so. that, that's a quick easy survey oh, yeah. I just kind of went through with my eyes in your back if you want to fill it out give it to me after <laughs> All right, so any other questions on that? Okay, so are we in favor to move that housing grant public hearing scheduling to tonight's meeting for yes, uh, tonight's yes. business meeting for a vote? Okay, uh, wastewater treatment plant. Yes, Lime the waste, Slaker. wastewater treatment plant, Lime Slaker, and water treatment plant boiler. I'll turn over to DPW Director Frank uh, to talk about these issues with council. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so in your package, you'll see a memo and a couple resolutions. Uh, the Bureau of Water and Wastewater issued a request for bids on April 11, 2023 for the pre-procurement replacement equipment to be used at the water filtration plant. The equipment is used in the treatment of the drinking water supply to the city. Bid documents were opened May 12, 2023. They were reviewed by city staff. We had four different bidders on four different pieces of equipment that we put out for bid. After opening the bids and reviewing all the bids, we decided to move forward in the process with two of the pieces of equipment for pre procurement. These two pieces being the boiler for the plant as well as the lime slaker. The other two pieces of equipment, the precipitator and low lift pump, uh, we've actually decided it's in the best interest of the city and the project that we will be putting that back out to bid. Uh, with installation as part of the bid proposal. We're recommending that City Council award the contracts at today's business meeting. Uh, the first one was the Lime Slaker, and that is a bid to Kester in the amount of $231,960. Oops, $231,960. 
and then a boiler with H and B Sales Group for twenty-eight thousand five hundred seven dollars. Any questions on that? Okay, so we in consensus to move both of those because there's actually two; they're separate. The wine slicker and the boiler are listed separately. So, any questions on either of those? So we in consensus to move those to tonight's business meeting for a vote. Okay, that gets moved. Motion to end the conference. Mr. Veely, seconded by Ms. Schmidt. You would call the roll, please. Council Member Veely. Yes. Twitchell. Yes. Canale. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Bayakowski. Yes. Jankowski. Yes. So I now call to order the regular business meeting. Public comments. Okay, all speakers should have registered and signed up in advance with the city clerk. Please state your name and address and use the podium. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes. Please address your comments to the chair. Council will not engage in debate with the speaker. On the first bell, that means you have 30 seconds left. Please wrap it up because on the second bell, I'm going to have to stop you in mid-sentence because we have several people speaking tonight. So we need everybody to get their fair five minutes in. Okay, call the first one up. Ryan Duffy. Uh, so my name is Ryan Duffy and I live at 9 Pearl Street. Uh, I am the director of the Holland Land Office Museum here in Batavia and I am speaking on behalf of the museum and it's uh, the organization that runs it, the Holland Purchase Historical Society. Uh, I've become before you, uh, Council Chair, to uh, request uh, the consideration of donating of funds from the city towards the museum in order for us to continue our mission and our goal of preserving the local history of not only Genesee County but specifically Batavia as we do carry a lot of the local history within our archives and within our museum that pertains to the history of the village and the city of Batavia uh, going all the way back to the very beginning. Uh, any funds that can come towards the museum from the city would be very beneficial towards educational program in particular, as well as promoting more community activities where we can interact with a larger segment of our local community and hopefully farther, uh, as well as promoting more of our research aspect, which is in tandem with our education, but this also brings in uh, many individuals from outside the area uh, to especially learn more about our local history and want to explore it. Uh, for instance, last week I even had somebody all the way from Jakarta, Indonesia, which used to be called Batavia, so our reach even reaches internationally in some cases. Yeah. Uh, but we uh, do get a lot of research requests from around the country, uh, looking back to genealogy or land records that we have at the museum, and a lot of those people end up coming to visit the museum as well, uh, once we're able to help them. So any funding that does come in uh, would be put towards those goals in order to help us expand and improve the programming that we already do, uh, as it is very important to us that we continue to become more of a community aspect, and that's been one of our goals uh, in recent years, to become more involved in the community in whatever ways we possibly can, uh, as well as to promote ourselves as one of the premier cultural institutions of the community as we are the museum in Batavia, and it, we see it as one of our goals to continue to promote that local history uh, and make sure that it continues on for future generations. I, I thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Well, we'll address all the comments at the end, so we're not going to leave you hanging, but we have to get through everyone else. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We will talk about it. Okay, the next. Marsha Bone. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Marsha Bone, 56 Buell Street. Um, I am talking about the bid spider walk. Um, as a participant of the walks that happen in Batavia, in my experience it's been wonderful. I think one of the council members said it brings in other people. I often bring in many friends and family members from out of town. We look forward to them every year. They usually ask me um, you know, when they are so they can fit into their schedules and have a good time. Um, they come as far as Buffalo, Greece, Rochester, um, kind of all over the place. So it's something definitely that people look forward to. 
Um, I know also it's allowed me to even kind of interact with other small businesses like uh, Charles Mencia, Brian right here, or Brian right here. Um, I got to meet him at one and I have many nieces and nephews so I referred them to his shop as part of that because I was able to speak with him or poor. That's in the back of my mind, so helping grow our small businesses in Batavia. Um, and the last thing I just want to say is that I've never been to one where it's gotten out of hand or anything like that. Um, I mean, the glasses usually are glass, so I don't think I've really ever seen anyone get out of control or anything like that. It's usually a very um, fun thing, and usually people leave very happy. I've met so many friends that way as well. I know Shannon works extremely hard on it and does a very, well, very good job every year. And especially if my friends from out of town want to keep coming back to it, I think that speaks volumes. So. And if you guys haven't gone, you really should. I'll see you there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be able to find out. Who next? Orion Tyler. Hello, Council. Thank you for hearing me. Uh, Orion Tyler. Uh, I live uh, down in Leroy, but more importantly, I am employed, as uh, was just stated, at Charles Men's Shop, and that is who I am uh, here on behalf of, as well as the bid um, in the uh, you know cider walk. Um, I am really hoping that things can be adjudicated and we can have everything hammered out and have the events as they are so forth um, allowed to proceed. Um, it brings in an incredible amount of business. I can honestly even tell you guys the amount of times I have struck a conversation with people uh, when they come in and I ask them, oh, what they're doing, hey, I'm going to a wedding, I need a nice soup. Hey, great, I can help you out with that. How did you hear about us? Oh, well, I went to one of your beer walks. Saw a really, really nice store. And that just, it really, really warms my heart to be able to uh, provide such a service. And I feel like we're a gem of the area. I feel like all across America, Towns like this are really dying. Services like we provide are really, really dying. And it, it saddens me. I'm definitely a little bit old fashioned in my heart and I'm really, really happy to be able to carry on the legacy and, and, and the service and the character that not only Charles Menchop gets to provide, but um, that the town allows us to continue. So, so, so much commerce and revenue comes into this town, not only through us, of course, and the rest of the town, but it allows people, as she just described, to come from other areas. Friends who are looking for something to do over the weekend, and specifically now in the summer. One of my gripes, personally, uh, has been everything's been in the winter when we've done walks like this. And now that it's in the summer, I feel like we could have uh, an unlimited potential. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to uh, having this event, and I hope that you guys see it in both a uh, community interest and an economic interest and a character of the town interest to allow this to move forward. It would mean the world to not only myself and the businesses, but I think the entire town in general. Uh, and I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Michelle Horton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to read this. Um, the reason that I'm here this evening is to voice my concern in regards to the incident that happened on Friday afternoon at 4 Batavia City Center in front of Ever President Church. That there was uh, absolutely no communication with the business owners in regards to, sorry, in regards to the Friday night event. The stage for this event completely blocked the entrance of our church. It would have been, if we would have been having an event that night, we would have had difficulties with our egress, not to mention parking. Also being a church, the church doors, if need be, are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Being a good neighbor and being part of a good community means that we should communicate with the owners in regards to events that may be happening just in case they're happening simultaneously. We informed our neighbors, including Tompkins Insurance, because of the fact that we were actually using Tompkins Insurance's parking lot. A representative of Tompkins Insurance actually thought the setup was ours. 
I want to let you know that my husband was at the church roughly at 12 noon to unload in preparation of our event, which was taking place on Saturday. At that time, the gentleman who was setting up the stage approached my husband, and they had a conversation in regards to the fact that he asked three times to the person coordinating this event on Friday whether or not the stage was supposed to be actually set up directly in front of our church, apparently him thinking maybe it wasn't right. Now, mind you, there was all that empty space over by J.C. Plenty's, plenty of room and plenty of parking area also to set up. Not only that, but on Friday, this company came to repair a drain in the Tompkins parking lot. They were unable to perform their work that day due to the fact that they were not informed that there was going to be an event on Friday. They came back Saturday morning, the morning of our event, to perform the work on Tompkins Insurance's parking lot. but. Thankfully, we had already had approval to use the parking lot and they had to leave with the work once again undone. I think we live in a wonderful community, but I think that there is a lack of communication within the city center community, especially when it comes to ownership of businesses and the public use of certain areas, and this needs to be corrected. I wanted you to understand that we are a church. We are a church first and foremost. And this event that took place directly in front of our church could have given the community the wrong impression and the misrepresentation of us that we are a gay-affirming church, as we are not a gay-affirming church. It would be like one of you being seen walking out of a strip club as you were up for re-election. This could give the wrong impression to a community. Even though you have the right to be there, but we as a church do not have the right to compromise the word of God. We do not have the right to misrepresent God. It is clearly in the word of God that says that we are not to give the appearance of evil, no matter what, and that we are responsible because we are not to cause our brothers and our sisters to stumble. Thank you very much. Nathan Norton. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us to be here to speak. I gotta figure this out. I gotta get right to reading because I'm a preacher and I might take too long. I wanted to add to what my wife said is that uh, you know we've already gotten a lot of kickback also because of the group that was there on Friday night. Uh, and just because you hear words like not gay affirming, most of the church isn't. There are gay affirming churches out there. But I want to be clear and be on record that we are a people-affirming church. We love all people of all kinds, of all backgrounds, of all races. It doesn't matter. They're accepted. They could come to our church. They could meet Christ. They could be a part of our family. But the Bible is very clear on some of these things. I would not want to have some of these wine walks and some of these. There used to be a beer tent set up for, I think, beer tasting. I wouldn't want that in front of the church either. There's just things that I would not want in front of that church for those reasons. I'm going to read you just a few things that I wrote down. John 3, 16 through 21 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they may be done in God. 33 years ago, I met my wife as an 18 year old methamphetamine cocaine addict, uh, homeless at one point drug addicted to cigarettes, alcohol, marijuana, LSD, everything under the sun that you could imagine. It was people like our church who were inviting and accepting that allowed us to come in and experience God in a way that proved his love and proved that there was a God. And as we met him and gave our lives over to him, he delivered us from the inside out from all the horrible life that we was living. And I wanted to share that to let you know that of course we are inviting for all people and accepting of all people. How else would people that need help get help if they couldn't meet the person they need help from? Our daughter Tasha lived with a very difficult life with various physical ailments, multiple surgeries. She was molested and then later raped. Our daughter struggled, excuse me, 
with trying to understand the loving God. We spent years, and I mean years, talking with her about the scriptures and the truth of who God was and how much he loved her. She struggled with bisexuality and lesbianism. And we didn't shun her. We didn't try to push her away. We didn't tell her that she was evil or some kind of sinner. Rather, we loved her and we shared the truth of the scriptures with her and showed her the love of God. We did all the things that any loving family would do, have dinner together, go to movies together, picnics, live together. We did life together. But we did not compromise on God's word. We did not water it down to try to change God's word to fit into her choices to make her feel more accepted, more approved in the lifestyle choice that she had made. Why did we do that? Because God is sovereign and his viewpoints and his stance on certain things are steadfast and immovable. And I do not have the authority or the power to change, or excuse me, to change God's position on what is right and what is wrong. The United States Constitution has not established right from wrong. No other country in this world has established right from wrong. No individual has ever established right from wrong. God himself has laid out the framework for good and evil. Three years ago, our daughter came to the understanding that her lifestyle was in contrast to God's will and plan and purpose for her. And humbling herself, she asked God to help her and to heal her. And she met him and was born again, a new creation, a new person. She experienced Jesus, not religion. As we call it, she was forgiven, set free, saved by the power of God. Two and a half years ago, Tasha died suddenly in the night. And I don't know how I would have lived with myself if I had buckled and twisted the truth of God and changed the scriptures to accommodate the struggle that she was going through and shown her a false love. I don't know how I would have been able to forgive myself had I not been bold enough to share with her the true love of God. Now my daughter, knowing that she not, had not met Jesus, would have I've never been able to rest with that. But now I live every day with a hope and an anticipation, knowing that one day we'll be reunited. In Ephesians 5, it says, For you were once darkness, but now... You're going to need to wrap it up real quick, okay? Okay. Well, I didn't know if that was the first or second, so we're going to give you a little leeway, but please wrap it up quickly. Wrapping it up. My point is, is this, that on social media today, I don't need this. Because I said that we were coming here, we've already been barraged with the, the titles of bigot and hater and uh, homophobic, and the list goes on and on and on. And I just wanted to go on the record tonight to let people know that not only are we a people, a firming church who loves all people, but we love God and his stance first. We are actually moving forward now with having some dinners and some open discussions and some forums so that we could all meet in a peaceable manner to talk and discuss these things and why we believe this and hear your heart as to why you think we I'm think sorry, this and that. Time is up. That's fine. But thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Council responses to public comment? Uh, on the Holland Land Office, Rachel, do you want to put that on the list for budget consideration next year? I can, and it can be discussed by council. Just a thought for the record, Bob? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny because I was listening to Ryan and looking, there's a Holland Land Office on the podium, but uh, a lot of people don't realize the Holland Purchase Society that runs the land office is completely independent. Of the, the building's owned by the county, but the Purchase Society is completely independent. And they're the ones that open the doors, have the volunteers run it, do the displays, have the events, and all the rest of it. And uh, they have some brand new things going on. I, I'm a member, stop in there occasionally when I have a chance. But, uh, I heard they had a good trivia night, too. Is that true, Brad? Is that a trivia question? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure they have a good trivia tonight. <laughs> anyway, yeah, putting it on for the next fiscal year is a great idea. Thank you. Okay. We'll put it up for discussion. and I'll... everybody to kind of put that on the list, and we can consider that in the next budget item. Thing. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on any other comments that we spoke to tonight? Bob? Bob? On the uh, parking lot situation, I, I think in the future, any events that no business should be locked in. I mean, we wouldn't know if somebody uh, is going to be getting a furniture delivery at 9 o'clock at night and here's their whole business blocked in. So I, I hate to see any business totally blocked in. Like As do I. Yes. So that probably should be considered in the future. Yeah, staff worked it. with the Nortons that day and there was ample room to move around. Um, the stage was placed in a way which the backdrop was the facade of their building, but it was in a public parking lot. 
um, I just ask that you could refer it to staff. So when we do event applications, we can take into consideration placement of things and um, try to help those who um, would like to do events in our city parking lot to maybe have better flow. Anyone else? Okay. Communications? Ever Present Church submitted their application for an anniversary dinner on Friday through Sunday, July 14th through the 16th from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. This is in the city center concourse in front of the church to celebrate their 10 year anniversary. Any questions you can on that? Okay, the next one. GoArt um, requested to hold play in the park on Sunday, July 23rd in Centennial Park from 3 to 5 p.m. to put on a Shakespeare play in the park. <coughs> Any questions or concerns on that? Okay, next one. And the last one, Grace Baptist Church requested to hold Family Fun Day on Saturday, August 5th from noon to 3 in Austin Park with games, food, and various activities. Any questions on that? Okay. The next City Council meeting will be held Monday, June 26, 2023, 7 p.m. at the City Hall Council Boardroom, second floor, City Center. And tonight we also have a proclamation being read by Council Member Briggs for Mr. David Calantonio, who is retired, retiring. So if you want to come up and get your... I'm not sure when your last date was, but I know it's soon or it's already... Come right up, come right up in the middle. I think you got to come around. Mr. Colantonio contributed to several water plant improvements, and whereas David was always a pleasure to work with and helped educate new operators when they were employed. And now, therefore, we have resolved the City Council of Batavia, whom takes great pride in recognizing David Colantonio for his dedication and excellent successes as water treatment plant operator with over 18 years of service to the city of Batavia and acknowledges his accomplishments. See you one day. Census to approve the April 23 financials. You've been given a copy of both May 2023 minutes for the meeting minutes. Uh, there was two meetings in May and they're both in your packet. Any questions, concerns, omissions, additions, anything you'd like to do on the minutes? Any, any um, so are we in consensus to approve the May minutes? Okay, we, are. we have several agenda items, so we'll Try to get through those quickly. Item 51, 2023, the engineering firm. 
Mr. Richmond. Item 53, 2023, Bureau of Maintenance Surplus. Mr. Bajkowski. 54, 2023, the uh, phone equipment surplus disposal. Schmidt. 56, 2023, Batavia Petal Party, LLC. Mr. Bailey. 57, 2023, uh, public land known as Jackson Square to allow open containers. It's Briggs. 58, 2023, approve the uh, budget amendments. Mr. Canale. 59, 2023, the use of the Canine Committee Fund balance. Ms. Briggs. 60, 2023, fireworks display at Dwyer Stadium. Mr. Richmond. 61, 2023, business improvement district cider walk uh, for the uh, release of the open containers. Ms. Schmidt. 62, 2023, resolution to schedule a public hearing providing information for the uh, block grant. Mr. Twitchell. 63, 2023, liquid lime sludge disposal. Uh, and 64, 2023, the new boiler. Mr. Kinnan. City Attorney's Report. Yes, Council President, members of Council, we continue to work on a broad spectrum of matters for the city, ranging from general municipal matters, contract review matters, uh, matters relating to real estate, tax foreclosure, code enforcement, and general day-to-day -day questions that arise from the departments and the city management. At this time, there's also one attorney-client matter to discuss. Any questions for the City Attorney? City Manager's Report. Yes, thank you, Council President. I just want to point out Resolution 6323 has an error in the title. It should say a resolution to award the pre-procurement of a lime slaker for the water treatment plant. So if you do read that, if the minutes could reflect that, um, the title is an error, and therefore your agenda is an error. So it's not removal, transportation, and disposal of lime sludge. It is actually a resolution to award contract for a lime slaker for the water treatment plant. Okay. Thank you. So the, the resolution is right, the title is right. Correct, so yes. And right I wanted to make sure when it was read by Council Member Bajakowski, we had the right title for the minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, just a few updates. We are, this is grant season. We were successful in getting a congressional direct funding allocation from Senator Schumer's office and Senator Gillibrand's office in for further consideration at the federal level for water meter replacements. Um, but we also would like to go after a CFA grant for those water meter replacements. We were unsuccessful in that grant last year, so we'll be looking at this this year. A grant came out for tree removal and planting with USDA, which we were able to apply for. And we've also been in touch with Genesee Soil and Water and they're considering ways they may help us as well, especially with the work at Centennial Park to put new trees in and take down ones that need to come down. As you'll remember, the tree plan, was it, which was issued in 2016? 2016, 2016 um, had numerous, almost an overwhelming amount of trees. I believe most of them were either ash which are threatened by the ash borer or silver maple. <coughs> I got that right, Scott? Thanks. Um, so we are still trying to work through and find funding to be able to remove those trees and to plant new trees. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. We're also looking at the ice rink chiller. We do not believe it will last more than one more season. We've contracted with NIPA as an add-on to our street light project and they um, 
They contracted with Wendell Engineers to do a feasibility study, so we'll re be reviewing that soon, understanding the cost, and potentially working with NIPA on financing. Right now, NIPA is actually offering way lower rates than the bond market, so I will give you more information on that when I have it. We also have an opportunity to apply in this round of CFAs for a grant for the ice rink chiller as well, which would cut down on how much investment we'd need to make. So that's kind of where we're at in terms of all the different grants. As you know, New York State came out with what's called the Consolidated Funding Application, where all grants are basically due this year is a little late because of the state budget by the end of July. So we have to hustle um, in the next two months to get these prepared and bring the ones that need approval through council through to you folks. Any questions for the uh, now we're talking about the removal of trees. Um, I did have a constituent ask me about the, uh, I think there was about three or four trees removed. I think they were arbor ash or one of those that's getting diseased. Uh, um, but they're in Lambert Park and he was just curious as to when and if those would be stumped out. So I don't know if you... Do we have an answer? We're currently looking into it right now. So. That just got brought to our attention probably last week. So, yeah. I, I had, when I responded to him, I said, I'm, I'm, I don't work on one of the crews, but I can only use logic um, that the uh, DPW will be around taking down all the trees first and then probably going back and stumping them in a, in a whole second process. But am I close in saying that? Yes. And yep. we can always Absolutely. follow up with an email to Olive yeah. Council to mm -hmm. give you the information as well. Yep. Okay, committee reports. Um, before we get into it, I just wanted to notify everyone that um, Patty Casino, who is going to remain on as the bid um, the liaison, is unable to do it, and so she asked us to find someone else to do it. Uh, Tammy has expressed an interest. Is there anyone on council that needs to do that or wants to do it? Or otherwise, we can give it to Tammy and let her work with bid. Uh, she volunteers a lot of time with them already, so she's quite familiar with them. So I think she'd be a good contact person and liaison for the bid. So if that's okay with you, Tammy, uh, we got a little brief conversation. I made sure you were still interested. Uh, so it's, it's Rachel, Tammy will take over those duties. And we'll do a resolution in the conference and the next business, but in the interim, I'm sure it would be fine to get the communications and correspondence of the bid. You can notify. Ms. Pacino and let her know we found somebody. I else. will. Yes, I'll give her a call tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, uh, okay. Ms. Briggs, go ahead. I'm very excited because mm -hmm. I wanted to announce that the City of Batavia Police Department has partnered with City Church again this year to host the Batavia Police Community Night. Okay, it's going to be held on Tuesday, August 22nd from 5.30 to 8pm at St. Anthony's. It's located at 114 Liberty Street. And this event is also going to serve as a fundraising opportunity for the City of Batavia Police Canine Program. So we're excited about that. Okay. And this positive event is aimed to enhance the relationship between neighbors and law enforcement, bringing back that sense of community. We all get, because we want safer neighborhoods, so we're all working together. And I just wanted to tell you that there's going to be games and there's going to be food, and we're bringing back the, tunk, the dump tank. Because it's so popular, people love Duncan, Chief Hyrush. Okay? He's one of our, I'm serious, he, he he's, our guy. Guy. he's our guy. They love Duncan. So please, if you come for any other reason, okay? And there's going to be food and all that stuff. So you don't have to cook. Okay? So there you go, that's it. Okay, great, thank you. Make sure you put that on your calendars. That's in August? Yes, or? August, Tuesday, August 22nd. 22nd. 5 30 to 8. And the chief looks great in a speedo. Resolution for Bob. Yeah, I just wanted to mention. Uh, uh, gave Heidi the final paperwork from the parade, but uh, we received a lot of compliments this year for the parade. That it was one of the best ever. Uh, no complaints from any groups about any of it. It all coincided. Starting earlier, coincided with the. Memorial, uh, the 
police did a wonderful job. Fire department and our DPW, they came through as usual in stellar form. And, uh, just There were so many volunteers, it was just unbelievable. So I'd like to thank and recognize all our city departments for their assistance and thank all those that participated. Thank you. Okay. Resolution 51, 2023. Mr. Richmond, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution selecting a list of engineering firms for engineering services for the city of the day. Second by Mr. Beely. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Beely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Okay, resolution 53-2023, Mr. Bajkowski, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution to uh, declare Bureau maintenance equipment surplus for the purpose of salvage and disposal. Second by Mr. Richmond. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Beely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canelli? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Okay, resolution 54 2023. Ms. Schmidt, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to declare the phone equipment surplus for the purpose of disposal. Seconded by Mr. Canelli. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Bealey? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Resolution 56, 2023. Mr. Bealey, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to assign certain authority to the Wikipedia Pedal Party LLC LLC open container. Second by Mr. Schmidt. Questions or concerns? I have a question that doesn't participate to this group, but uh, what about other people doing this, but they're not allowing alcohol on the cart? Will that be legal? And the reason I asked, I saw Buffalo pub crawls in town a couple of weeks, well, maybe four weeks ago, and they were going from bar to bar. City open container load law provides for special permission to be granted by council. That's all that's being provided for this particular operator. So if somebody else was doing it outside of a special permission granted by council, it would not be consistent with the open container law. Anyone else? Call the roll, please. Council member Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Resolution 57, 2023. Ms. Briggs, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to grant special permission for the public land known as Jackson Square to allow open containers. Second by Mr. Beale. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Resolution 58, 2023. Mr. Canale, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to approve the amendments to the 23-24 adopted budget. Seconded by Ms. Briggs. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Canale? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Resolution 59, 2023. Ms. Briggs, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to authorize the use of canine committed fund balance. Second by Mr. Canale. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Okay. 
Resolution 60, 2023. Mr. Richmond, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to use picnic in the park funding for a fireworks display at Dwyer Stadium, Independence Day weekend, 2023. Second by Mr. Beatty. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. <clears throat> Councilmember Richmond? Yes. Bayakowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Bealy? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canelli? Yes. <clears throat> Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Resolution 61, 2023. Ms. Schmidt, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to grant special permission to the Batavia Business Improvement District for the 2023 Cider Walk. Second by Ms. Briggs. Questions or concerns? Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I have real concerns that this isn't limited to specified areas on the sidewalk where people can walk down the street drinking out of an open container across streets. Uh, I, I have some serious liability concerns, so I just wanted to state that. Anyway, how would you have control if someone was drinking this walk where they wanted to walk? You can't control it. Same, the same way you would at uh, Jackson Square. The difference is, one, they may have a beverage in their hand as they walk from event to event. The other difference is they're not allowed to have the event because of things that transpired with the uh, Liquor Authority that requires it to be done differently. So I support the event. It's a positive event in our community. And I don't know why the Liquor Authority was involved in the first place, but if that's what they want us to do, it's a small thing for us to do as a council to make sure that this event continues on and that people get to enjoy it. It's like they have been for the last several years. And it's a, it brings people to our community and they get to see us at our best and have a great time. And, and there are volunteers, I'm understanding, that you, Andy, maybe can refresh me. There's volunteers everywhere, so anything that gets out of line they're going to see it, they're going to report it, they're going to address it, and they're going to make sure that everyone is safe and, and happy and, and moving along and, and abiding by all the rules and, and regulations. So. Well, and, and, and also, if I could add, um, like anything else, you got to try it. If there's a problem, it'll arise, and then we'll have to address the problem. Right. But why, why anticipate problems when we've never done this before? This will be kind of the first time we've done it. Let's do it, try it. If it goes well, with, you know, and, and, uh, and it's smooth, then away we go. Yep. I'd also like to hand Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ms. Schmidt? We do our best to, you know, watch the whole area at all times. We try to have as many volunteers as we can. Sometimes we're short on volunteers, but the last couple events, Shannon had walkie-talkies, and all the workers had them. So if we saw anything, we were radio, radio, radioing the each other in order to, you know, say, get over here, there's an issue, or, you know, we were running out of food in Tonawanda Valley for the last walk, and one customer got irate because we were running out of the food and she had the um, VIP ticket. So, you know, we're constantly in communication. There's also a line on the glasses. You know, they're only one ounce pour, so there's a distinct line in the glass we give out when they check in. Um, I myself used to attend the site, the wine walk years ago with friends from Rochester, and we, there was no open container, we walked out of one establishment and into another, mm -hmm. and I still had wine in my glass, and I was screamed at by those next people, the people in the next business, and I'm bringing this up to the committee, and now my friends from Rochester, and none of them want to go to the wine walk anymore, and I didn't for several years either until I got re-involved with the bid and saw that we're trying to run it so these things don't happen, but if, if we don't have the open container, we just can't right. do an event. And you're only talking one day for a very specific event with plenty of people around to keep that. Well, and that was a good point, if I can add to Tammy, that was a good point. When you do tastings, I did plenty of tastings in 14 years, I was in the liquor business, and you're required to, that's why there's a line on the glass, it's an eighth of an ounce, that's all you're allowed to pour. So it's basically a sip, maybe a sip and a half right. for some people. So they're not going to be on the sidewalk with anything in their glass, most likely. Yeah, most, most likely. likely. Right. And, and I've only seen, most of the people I've seen at the events I've attended were very responsible, and they were in groups, people taking care of each other, making sure people got home safely. 
So it, was, it, it didn't seem to be a problem then. I wouldn't foresee it to be now, but again, if it is, we'll address it and we'll make sure. I mean, we work there. very hard. You, you saw the way we worked. I, work. I saw you. We worked very hard. So any other questions or concerns on this? No. Okay, call the roll, please. Councilmember Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? No. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Keneally? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Okay. Resolution 62-2023, Mr. Twitchell, please. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to schedule a public hearing to provide information to the public on the Community Development Block Grant Program. Seconded by Mr. Bajkowski. Questions or concerns? Call the roll. Councilmember Twitchell? Yes. Keneally? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Veely? Yes. Resolution 63, 2023, Mr. Bajkowski, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I move a resolution to award a contract for the pre-procurement of a lime slaker for the water treatment plant. Seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Questions or concerns? I'd just like to point out, and, and people all across the country are finding out, the purification of water, the treatment of sewage, it's just the cost is just going up and up. It's a serious consideration, you know. I mean, it's something we're going to have to get used to paying for. And uh, a lot of these costs, there's no way around them. There's just no way around them. And as we've seen recently, the chemical costs have gone through the roof. So. Any other questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Okay, resolution 64 2023, Mr. Canale. Thank you, Council President. I move a resolution to award a contract for a new boiler at the water treatment plant. Seconded by Mr. Veely. Questions or concerns? Call the roll, please. Council Member Canale? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. Feely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Okay, you want to take this into the regular session? Thank you, Council President. Whereas Article 7, Section 105, 1F of the Public Council's Law permits the legislative body of the municipality to enter into executive session to discuss the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person, appropriation, or matters leading to the appointment. Employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Now there be resolved by the Council of the City of Batavia that upon approval of this motion, the City Council does hereby enter into executive session. Second by Ms. Briggs. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Veely? Yes. Twitchell? Yes. Canale? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Bajkowski? Yes. Jankowski? Yes. 